Hello everyone, welcome to my new series, Topaz Tuesday. This is Gary D. Tynecourt from MoreThanASnapshot.com and I'm going to try to introduce you to a new plugin or a new feature from Topaz every Tuesday. Today I want to talk about a new version of Mask AI. There's not a whole lot in the way of new features in this version, but basically they claim they have reworked the program so that it functions better, that it produces better masks. And if you've seen my previous video on Mask AI when it first came out, you have to first know that I really am a big fan of Topaz products and I, I love all their plugins, especially the Sharpen AI. But when I tried that Mask AI for the first time, it did not impress me. You know, I think at this time, with all the competitors out there, even Photoshop has good tools for for masking and selecting and all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to put out a plugin that you're going to have to pay for, it better be really good. It better work very well all on its own. And it just didn't. It did not, in my opinion, work as well as I would have liked it to. So they've just released a new version of Mask AI where they've claimed they've improved this. And I'm going to test it out and see. Um, so far in the in the few files that I've processed, it does seem to be a whole lot better and I am much more impressed with it. So I think that this will be something that will be very useful. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty easy. And I think the results are going to speak for themselves. So let's head over to the computer and try this out. Okay, so my plan is to just show you a couple of examples of how to use the software and the results that you'll get. So I'm going to open an image, just a simple JPEG, uh, nothing too elaborate to uh, start with. Okay, so when you first open an image, you'll see that the whole picture is green. So green represents the part of the picture that you want to keep. So we're going to make a tri-mask where the green is the part that's going to be kept. The blue is the part that the software has to compute to find the edge. And then the red will be the part that it's going to cut out. So to get started, I'm just going to click on the blue brush and I'll make it a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to trace around the edge of the owl. So hopefully it will be able to find the difference between the edge of the owl and the sky in the background. So you just want to go over all the holes and places where there would be a difference between the bird and the sky. And you don't have to be super careful about it. This is the compute part. It's supposed to figure it out for you. You just have to go all the way around. As you can see, I'm not being very careful at all, so hopefully it'll do a good job anyway. I suppose if you made the brush smaller and really took your time, that would probably go much better. Okay, again, the green it's going to keep. This blue area here, it's going to compute. And then the red, to make that go quicker, I can just select the red bucket and then click out here, and everything else here is going to be cut out. So then you click Compute Mask, and it should figure it out. Okay, and there it is. So let's zoom in and take a look at how it did. All right, it looks like it went in between every feather. It looks nice and smooth. And even got the tail, you know, without making any adjustments to it, I think it did an excellent job. I have no problem with that. Now, it doesn't have a lot of um, things sticking out like, you know, hair on a person or something, but still feathers are not perfectly smooth and it still did a great job. So I'm just going to save that. And it's going to give me a choice of saving it as a PNG. That's going to have this checkerboard clear background so that I can use it in a composite later on. And, you know, you have your other typical uh, PNG or JPEG type options. So I'm not going to compress it very much. I'm just going to click Save and it's done. All right, let's close this one and open another one. All right, so let's say I might want to replace a sky in this image. All I have to do is, uh, of course, use the blue to highlight the edges.
It's important that I go around and into the corners and cracks of these rocks. Probably should have made this brush smaller, but I think it will still work just fine. And I'll even get this little space right here in the middle. All right, and then I'll use the bucket to get rid of that part and I'll hit compute. There it is. If I uh, zoom in a little bit, you can see that the edge of the rock is nicely done. Even that little hole, you can see the sun shine through and it did all around the edges of the rock and it was quick and it was easy. And that result is very good. So I'm gonna save that one as well. All right, let's try to do one more. All right, let's see if we can cut out the owl from uh, this mess of branches. This can be tough because the branches go all around it and sometimes cut into it. So uh, this one could be fairly challenging. Okay, so it's selected. Now we'll compute the mask. All right, and there it is. Let's take a closer look. Around here, it all looks pretty good. The problem with this is because it had some strands that went in front of the uh, owl. This one is necessary because it's kind of sitting on this branch. Uh, this one I'd have to clone out. And it did a good job all the way around except on the top here. So I'd have to refine that a little bit. Let's have it recompute that section. And it did a very good job. Uh, I might have lost a little bit. Uh... All right, let's try the red. Since I know I want to get rid of that part. There you go, that's better. And I need to just fix a little bit of the face here. So I'm just touching up a few edges that might have got cut off. But overall, it did a pretty good job for uh, the owl as well. So I'll save that one. So as you can see, it works very well. There may be some images where you have to put in more work. You might have to use the edge tools. You might have to refine your mask a bit. But it doesn't get much simpler than that. Well, I hope you've just seen that Mask AI is pretty easy to use and it works very well. And now I think it is a plugin that is worth having in your toolkit. So if you're interested in more information about it, if you just want to download a free trial and try it out for yourself, I'll put a link down in the description where you can check it out. It is on sale now for a short amount of time. And if it goes off sale, I'll put my code on there. You can use the code snapshot and get a discount. So either way, um, you won't have to pay full price for it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.